folks of the internet, welcome to another episode of Lads Discuss Death Battle. I am joined here by, as always, as always. Really? <laughs> Re oh. How dare you not welcome your king? You give your royal highness the proper introduction <sighs> he needs. Okay, then. Welcome to the latest episode of the Lads Discuss Death Battle. I said it again. <laughs> we got Saber King here and Jaru Jaru. <laughs> It's actually Hello. Char Char J. Thank this you. This is the worst <laughs> intro we've ever done. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, because you can't get anything right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, feels bad, man. So we're um, going to discuss Death Battle. We talk about fictional characters killing each other for our amusement because we are horrible people. Speak right. for yourself. I'm an asshole. I'm kind of speaking for all of us. You can fart me. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, we're, of course, going to talk about the latest episode, Leonardo versus Jason Todd. <laughs> you know, oh, God. I didn't know which Jason it was last episode. Jason Voorhees Todd, the champion, the first, the second. <laughs> God, how many so Jasons many are there in fiction? Too uh, many. many. <laughs> Hollywood loves Jason. Of course. So I was thinking before we talk about the latest episode, uh, last episode we asked, or at least I asked, what are people's thoughts about returning characters? I've got at least three comments here that, you know, I kind of, I think would make an interesting discussion. So let's start with um, Yang the Insane. Personally, I like characters returning if their last episode was either mediocre or info needs updating. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I agree with the latter because they've ha done returning characters info a little bit poor taste. Like, I, I do not like some of the choices they made with the returning characters. So I think, yeah, that's a benefit of them returning, so they can finally get the analysis, right? Okay, uh, Jaru? Right, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. From Yang the Insane. Okay, to sum it up, she doesn't mind returning characters as long as, like, either their previous episodes was either bad and their info needs updated. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't... I think that there some characters have multiple good matchups, so I think they can be justified for coming back, even if their previous episodes were good. Um, like, Gandorf versus Bowser was terribly animated but as far as the you know analysis went it was pretty all right some but, people might disagree with you on that part yeah we'll talk about those people in a little. <laughs> um but uh no i think uh i think returning characters are fine as long as they're not done too much and they're done in the right way yeah um <coughs> my thoughts on that do you know what she brings up a good point for people who are surprised yang yin saying the girl i know shocker um, okay, so if an episode is bad, I don't think that's really an excuse to bring back a character, because Captain Marvel vs. Android 18, you know, that wasn't a bad episode, but it's definitely not one of my favourite episodes. That doesn't mean I want Captain Marvel back for another fight, especially one against Shazam. Nobody wants uh, Carol Danvers back for another fight. Upsetting Captain Marvel fan here. Oh, oh, fuck the, the Carol Danvers fans. They're a bunch of misogynistic assholes. So I'm... Oh, forget it. But, um, okay, but this bit I do agree with her on. Info might need update, and that does make sense, because if I look at a lot of season one episodes like Vegeta or Shadow, um, those characters... Well, I mean, Shadow did get an updated uh, analysis in Mewtwo vs. Shadow. It wasn't that great, but, you know, it was something. But definitely characters like Vegeta, who... Really? He's done so much since that episode, and it's like, I, I, I will admit, I would like to see him return, but the side of me, it's like, uh, at the same time, I don't, because turning characters is kind of a mere thing for me. I um, want the prince to return. <laughs> he deserves to come back. If Goku can be in twice... Why can't Vegeta come back? To be back? fair, that was more of a rematch. And you know, I never did say his last episode. I'm not too um, annoyed of remasters and rematches. I'm okay with those because it's like an update. That's the thing. I would prefer if they updated the episodes. Like, um, on a previous podcast, I said I would love to see Yang versus Tifa remastered. And I'm still holding up to that. 
and we get updated info, and who knows, maybe the result could be different. Okay, well, I agree with that, but Goku versus Superman 2 does not count as a rematch. It, it kind of was a rematch. No, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't. This is, it was a continuation. It was just hyped up by me, by uh, promotional marketing to be a rematch. It wasn't a rematch. Okay, well, fair enough. Okay, let's move on to the next comment I had. Okay, yes. so this comment's pretty long, so I'll just get the bit that was a bit more interesting. Because he started, like, suggesting us fighting matches. I don't know why. In regards to returning characters and franchises, it's about moderation in their appearances. Even if there are new characters from Marvel and DC fighting, because those characters' franchises have been so frequent in Death Battle, that it becomes tiresome. Franchises like TMNT, Star Wars, King of Fighters, etc., I'd love to see return because they haven't appeared on the show in years. I kind of agree with that, because... How many King of Fighters episodes have we actually had? Two. Like, I didn't know we had one. Uh, what do you mean, Terry Bogard? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Come on, that episode was awesome. Why are you? It was. That? No, it was. It was definitely awesome. It's just. Um, eh. I kind of understand what you're saying there. Like, as much as I like Marvel and DC characters getting in, if I'm uh, <laughs> talk about the next time, uh, kind save of it. Stuff. Stop. Don't don't get into the segue. I know, I know, sorry. So, it's okay. so tempting. Um, I kind of get what he means, because Marvel DC, yes, they have a lot of characters, and after the podcast, I did do some thinking. Uh, there is definitely characters who deserve, like, more screen time for Death Battle. Maybe in characters that aren't as popular. I mean, uh, to be fair, I still hold, I wouldn't mind less popular DC and Marvel heroes getting still, but maybe leave, like, the big popular ones, like, maybe for another time. Um, what do you guys think of this going? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, leave the com, leave the returning character, leave the popular returning characters out of it. Bring in lesser known ones. Give them the shine they deserve. So that way, it doesn't feel like you're oversaturating uh, people's recommendations with, oh, do you you like this DC character? Well, he was in, he or she was in this death battle. Go check it out. <laughs> um, Jaren? Um, if we're specifically talking about the idea of DC and Marvel coming back, I would, I could live without DC or Marvel we'll ever coming back together. Ever. Because I'm so sick of them. They're such bullshit. Because you can literally, like, get a, get, get, a, get a versus debater in a conversation on Twitter. And they'll find a way to call every Marvel and DC character light speed and a universe buster. Yo, so I, I did kind of see your tweets about that. Um, <laughs> you, you, no, yeah. but he's, he, he, he's kind of right, though. I mean, yeah, like, I've already mainly got, with DC. <laughs> I was mocking the idea of uh, light speed Spider-Man on Twitter, and uh, the versus debaters crawled out of the woodwork to be like, <clears throat> But he is, and they're like, here is comic panel showing that he is, and I'm just like, man, the exact same people were like uh, outlier, outlier, outlier about like other characters, but their precious Marvel and DC characters. No, Lightspeed Spider-Man, that's consistent. Please ignore all times he's hit five things slower than fucking bullets. <laughs> like, so yeah, True. I, it's like. Believe what you want about the capabilities of these characters, but don't, don't pretend they're consistent. No. Like, at all. Uh, well, and that's what I makes mean, them a little bit of a is like, um, on, I, I actually scrolled past it to get to the next one. It was more or less uh, about other franchises uh, being in place of like those Marvel and DC fights. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Do that. <laughs> Just <laughs> complete different rant on the question. <laughs> <laughs> can, you tell us who, can you tell us who was the man that shot Abraham Lincoln? Now you see about the versus community people, they would say Abraham Lincoln is near light speed. <laughs> they would. Oh no, the, no, not not at all. Especially since Abraham Lincoln teamed up with Batman. Wait, is that a thing? That is a thing. And uh, please find me that image. Um, when you send me this video later, I want to see that. <laughs> all right, and uh, yeah. all right. So Next final. Time. Comment. Uh, oh shoot, I lost it. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, here it is. So I'd argue having returning characters is a bad thing, Bill. But I get your point. 
So where's your argument, mate? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what I'll challenge you. you. Okay, fight me. Not now. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I then I, I can't give my thoughts on that because there's no argument presented. Well, I mean, okay, let me give... Okay, I'm assuming what this person means is, like, he doesn't see turning characters as a bad thing. I'm sorry if I assume your gender. I know that's not really a thing we should do these days. Uh, so, God, this what do you person, say that? I know, Jesus Christ. Um, so I don't think returning characters are like a bad thing. If people were getting that idea from the last episode, I just don't. I just think it's kind of unfair. Bring this thing. Let's say five seasons we didn't have returning characters, and then we surprisingly had a a, a returning character come back. I would not be too bothered by that because that's the thing. I, over what about time, three I, seasons? Yeah, it's like even though I wasn't too fussed about Leo versus uh, Jason. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 you're segueing again. Well, I mean, this is the last comment. We're going to segue into that, but I'm just giving like, an example. Okay, fair enough. Over time, I did kind of grew to liking that matchup a bit more because it's like, you know what? These guys didn't really, you know, Leo could use an update. Not that Jason didn't really contribute in his episode. He contributed <laughs> a little, but it was more like, oh, he's one of the pilots of the Megazord. So he contributed a lot. He summoned a power sword. That's a big <laughs> Oh, that good that did. It actually did do some good. What are oh, you talking yeah. about? Well, okay, so to this commenter, Asla Demolisher, that's that's a kick-ass name, I'm not going to lie. I like that name. Um, Asla, um, if you want to comment under this video, if you do watch it again, give us more of your thoughts about why you don't think it's a bad thing. And We won't, put, uh, we won't talk about it next episode, but I'll respond to this comment, because I've not actually responded to a single comment of my videos. So, I was thinking this could be the first opportunity we can do that. Nah, that's cool. Alright then, so, with all that done, let's talk about the latest episode, the TMNT leader, Leonardo, versus the Power Rangers leader, who recently made a, a resurface, actually, Jason yep. Scott. Hell yeah, he did! Jason's back in Power Rangers! Yeah, Woo! you know that, Jaru. Literally the day before the day before the battle came out on Rooster Teeth, they dropped the 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 trailer for Power Rangers Beast Morph for season two, and Jason makes a huge return in it. Oh, that's nice. And yes, the death battle curse works again. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> um, I'm really starting to believe that's a real thing. <laughs> this is, well, this is we get one okay. punch man season three. Let's go. Um, Hell yeah. Okay, to be fair, I'm think. Okay, this is my conspiracy brain working. I think they knew this was going to happen because now that Warner Bros are doing that crossover with what's the name of the company Hasbro for Power Rangers? What's the what's the company that's in charge of Power Rangers? Uh, Saban. Saban, yeah. Since they're getting together to make that crossover comic, and since Rooster Teeth works for Warner Brothers, I feel like Ben must have overheard that. He was like, "Drop what we're doing. We're doing this episode." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've often thought about this, but I don't think they schedule that anything. No, I mean, the fact that they're doing One Punch Man characters like now, like years after the peak of the hype, yeah. or <laughs> Miles Morales, like, like the second that the hype was done, they did it. So uh, I that's think true. It's that they don't plan around releases. <laughs> That's true. I mean, because I would like to believe Ben Singer has an office inside Warner Brothers and is occasionally invited to these meetings uh, with upcoming projects, but, you know, that's just a fantasy of mine. Can you imagine, like, that's... Ben Singer is just there. He's hearing about all these new DC movies, and the head is like, all right, Ben Singer, I know you do a verse show, but please don't bring in these characters yet. Okay. But you can use Jason, you know. <laughs> if, if, well, okay. if, if he somehow slipped um, unintentionally into your new season, you know, we'll turn a blind eye. Well, they don't own Jason. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, yeah, but they're doing a the crossover. Yeah, but... I'm just saying, like, you know, forget it. The joke's ruined. Yeah, the joke's ruined. You Confusion. ruined it, Steve Any King. Shut up. <laughs> anyway... You don't uh, tell me to shut up. I can fire him <coughs> on the spot right now, bro. Uh, okay, so we well, want to talk about the actual death battle? Yes, let's yes. talk about the death battle. 
Uh, okay. All right. So, as someone who didn't give a single crap about this uh, matchup, uh, all I wanted was for Leonardo to win because it would be hilarious. Uh, sadly, True. that did not happen. But you know, at least I, at least I was uh, made up for the lack of hilarity with a pretty cool two uh, D fight. Like pretty well put together. It had a lot of uh, fun moments, heightened moments, uh, you know, hand drawn stuff. Uh, I haven't listened to the music track yet, so I can't really comment on that. But I'm sure it's fine. At, you know, um, I'm sure it's fine at worst and good at best. Hold on, hold on. Before we continue, I just hit my knee. Oh fucking hell, that hurt. I don't. Have a, I don't have a desk. It's literally on my coffee table. Oh, well, and I'm sat down walk, with my ass on the floor. Oh my fucking knee! Walk it off, keep it. Walk it off, man. You can do it. Okay, and it'll cut that bit out. Um, Jared, continue. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I haven't listened to the music track yet, but I think it's pro it's probably good. Um, okay, fun match. Uh, un totally unsurprising outcome. I mean, no one thought Leo was gonna win at all. I mean, I have to actually say, like, okay. This could have been just Death Battle being very clever how they presented both these characters. I was the way they made Leonardo sound. They did make me think, oh, okay, maybe I was wrong that this was a total stunt. Like, obviously, I thought the Red Ranger was going to win after his analysis, especially with that that boulder thing. I was like, whoa, whoa when were these guys so powerful? After yeah. their after their original run. Like Jesus, like they freaking lifted boulders above their head like they're soccer balls. Oh, Go long! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, running so fast that they're causing like a sandstorm behind. I'm like, when was this in Power Rangers? <laughs> <laughs> I was only going to the TV show question. and the DC comic on why I thought he was going to beat Leo. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no one really thought Leo stood a chance, and it's uh, accurate. You'd be surprised uh, by that. When they did a poll, Leonardo, I believe, had 40% people voting for him. And, that's funny. Uh, and Jaru, I'm you're going to find it surprising. People say Leo is more powerful than um, Yang Chao Long from Ruby. <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> people think Leonardo is stronger than Yang Chao Long. I saw that when they were doing the Ruby versus Teenage Union to Turtle community death battle. Yeah, people think funny things. They do. What they they really do. Thankfully, <laughs> it's fiction, and thus everyone's beliefs are equally legitimate. It's Some true. People would disagree with that. <laughs> well, then those people. Those people are assholes. <laughs> there you go. I'm rubbing I'm, up on Jared. I don't know what's going on with Jared today, but he's being extra roasty than usual. <laughs> I just woke up, so that's the problem. Oh, really? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you just woke up. Nice so, job, Bill. What? It's one o'clock where it is, you guys, isn't it? Yes. I yes, should not have been this in bed this long. Yeah, but we Texans like to stay in bed longer than the average Joe. I like to think I am an average Joe. I like that. I wake up at like 7 a.m. <laughs> Yeah, that, that means you're an average. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, back uh, to uh, death battle. Um, cool fight. I enjoyed it. Uh, I wouldn't say it was my favorite 2D fight of all time or anything, but it was still pretty Aww. cool. Pretty cool. I think they put it, it was a... Uh, it was an entertaining like fight it, until the next big one, at least. It wasn't I think just it was a film. Probably, it was probably better than Miles versus Static. Um... <laughs> I'd say it's better than Black Canary versus Sindel. Really? That, yeah, I can probably agree with that, too. Although it yeah. might be recency bias. Um, I haven't watched that episode in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like this just had more going on. It was more it was more personality. There was more uh, craziness, like Leo teleporting all over the place, which I don't remember that part of the analysis, but you know, maybe I missed it. Oh, uh, yeah, they did um, bring that up. Like, this is kind of thing that they've kind of been doing like since last episode. They'll briefly talk about something, like, like with Mike Guy, they're like, oh, he could also fight in a wheelchair, but we're not going to talk about that. They mentioned Leo's sword that can teleport, but they don't go into any more detail than that. It's like, oh, well, if his swords break, don't worry, he's got a sword that can teleport him. Now onto his other feet, it's like, uh, no, 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 no. Please explain to me where the fuck he got a teleporting sword. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could explain to you where he got the teleporting sword because I actually watched a few episodes of Rise well, of TMNT. I mean, like, 
for me, who hasn't watched that show, you know, it's like, oh, how did he get that sword? Eh, we're not going to tell you, because fuck you. <laughs> With death battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up. He got it, beca- he got it because Nickelodeon <coughs> needed to sell more toys. That's can, how he got it. To me, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle franchise in a nutshell. That's that's the thing about Power Rangers too. Like when you look at their weapons, their characters, and even the Megazord, they're clearly toys. Well, yeah. Of course. In fact, not only jokes. Some of the weapons that they use on the show are just toys. Yeah. <laughs> like they didn't actually make those props. They just like, all right, um, oh shit, we're out of budget. Uh, just get the toy version. Well, no, the some of them they did. Some of them they did make as yeah, yeah, props. I'm saying, some... though, in like later seasons, though, they did start just using the toys. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Like, talk about saving budget. <laughs> just go Duh. to Poundland and just get a Power Ranger gun and just like, yeah, this will do. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, um, that's brilliant. I wish I bought yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm the, uh, I like the episode a little bit more. Uh, I, I said in my review how this is essentially the 90s version of He-Man versus Lino, and I stand by that statement because... I Much like that fight, the, the, this this fight, this animation just embraced its nineties-ness. Oh, like music, with, like. Oh no, yeah the 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 soundtrack, hands down, like not as good as as uh, the season premieres because you know rap beats um, arcade eight bit music. You know, That's I'm just a fact. Line, while I was walking to the shop today just to get some snacks, all I've been doing is just replaying like. Miles vs. Static on my SoundCloud. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, it's just so catchy. And I might download yeah. this song as well. I just don't think it reaches wings of eye and sort of, yeah, 80s level and stuff like that. No, yeah. Um, it's definitely music, though, that you can jam out to, you know, if you're just resting. Yeah, it, yeah no, um, I loved it. I love the animation. Uh, Lewis and his team put so much fucking work into this one. Um, and the fact that... And the surprise came to me when he he confirmed on my stream uh, that the, the the landscape and they're fighting in is the same city from it's the same model city from Miles vs. Static. Oh, and oh he, that's cool. Yes, and if you look in the background, Lewis made sure to add this little detail. If you go to thirteen minutes and three seconds of the fight. Uh, right behind Leonardo, you'll see the building where Miles and Static fought on, and you'll even see a little dent right in that building. Oh, that is a great attention to detail. Like, a... Yes, Lewis, perfect. nice. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, that's <laughs> um, pretty fun. I, it is, yeah. So no, does that I mean love these it. fights are connected? Like, these took place in the same universe? Uh, I would like to think so, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's my head. I know Death Battle don't have said this before, but this was years ago, that, oh, we don't connect the Death Battles in some way. They clearly do in some aspects. Yeah, in some aspects, but regardless of that, um, this animation was awesome. Easily my favorite of the three sprite fights we've gotten so far. Um, it had great choreography. The, the voice acting was so very good. Um, John and Gaggy really emb- embrace these characters to a T. Uh, uh, especially the second again? It was 13... 13 minutes and 3 seconds. 13 minutes and 3 seconds. Keep talking, I just wanted to check. So. Okay, okay. Uh, they both embrace these characters very well, especially John with all of those classic N- Ninja Turtles quotes like bodacious, radical, uh, I love being a turtle, Calabunga. Oh my god, um, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, it's very hard to see. You wouldn't notice it first time. But if you look at the very top, just before the camera pans out to weird pixelated Jason there, who just looks like the guy from, um, what was that name of that beat em up game? Uh, which beat em up game? Like uh, okay. Final Fight? Yeah, it's. It, he looks like a, a thug from Final Fight. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, you can actually see where, um, what's his name, uh, Static got thrown into. That That is great. Uh, that is, that's pretty clever. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, and the music was also awesome. I'm a huge fan. I grew up with uh, Super Nintendo, NES, Sega Genesis, so to have an 8-bit arcade sound for the track 
was a very good choice and, and definitely the made this. Happening. Yes, even the attacks. Like there's even portions of the track where it sounds like it came from a TMNT game, and it sounds like it belongs in a, a Super Nintendo Power Rangers game. I also love that uh, they took Jason Sprite from his very first Super Nintendo game, and they even reused his run cycle from that game. So details like that just I really was, make this... I thought it was great that they kept the Sprite from the previous fights as well. I don't know. That's, yeah. that, just, that was a bit nostalgic. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I also love the hand-drawn segments. I love how this fight actually felt much closer than the last two fights, because uh, the last two fights, in retrospect, didn't seem all that close. But this one seemed a little bit more closer. So, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely agree. It's not as much of a stop as I originally thought it was going to be. Yes. Uh, I love this fight. I, I've... I've seen it like 10 times now. I can't stop watching it. Uh, and I, even though we're not even done with this first half, this is arguably my favorite episode of season seven so far. Like this is number one at the top. Um, so I am, I loved it. Uh, I think this was a great way to um, bring both characters back, do them even better than they were done before. And just overall deliver an entertaining episode that can appeal to your inner 90s childhood. That was kind of the theme of this episode. Like, in the analysis bit, like, Boomstick and Wiz are showing all the classic shows and Boomstick's just eating, like, a cancelled cereal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, like, uh, that's a nice touch. <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> so They still haven't fixed uh, the designs, which I don't think need to be fixed. <laughs> I think I've gotten you. I think I finally succumbed to the Stockholm syndrome and given in to these <laughs> uh, these wonderful wisdom boomstick designs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of want there to be like you're in therapy. Like, so tell me, what was the problem with you? Well, there was this man I once knew. Actually, two men. Somehow they're just not the same as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I still see his smile when I close my eyes. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Perfect episode. I, I, I gave it an A+. I have absolutely no flaws with it whatsoever. It was a perfect episode. Perfect analysis, perfect research, perfect animation. Did you hear that, people? Richard actually complimented the analysis. <laughs> yes, I this did. This first in a long time of times he's just complained about it yeah yes no absolutely i i i was i was vividly surprised on how amazing the analysis was in this like i i've i've tuned out to the analysis ever since um season five because the analysis is now just ooh, it's time for wizard boomstick to be funny then talk about this calculation now it's time for them to be funny again it That's just seems like they want the analysis to be have a bit more personality than just some really boring guy like, so here's the yeah. they did it with just ben when he was just explaining all the feats it was just so boring to listen to well yeah but it wasn't just that it was never just that no like, no like it's the uh, Pokemon Battle Royale is the funniest fucking episode in the entire show. Yes, right? it's still like uh, Dan versus uh, Mr. Satan versus Dan Habiki. That's one of the funniest analysis they've ever done, just because of how much they crap on Dan Habiki and yeah. how surprised they are at Mr. Satan. I'll um, only say my but, probably the funniest analysis for me it has to be Smokey the Bear versus McGruff. Yes, <laughs> exactly. How serious they were taking these two. Uh, yeah, yes. By you contrast, know. you know what's not funny? Doing like the most tired of gags on yes. <laughs> these skits that last way too long. Yes, the gun knife bit was the only thing that, oh, that kind was funny. of. No, no. It's also <laughs> one of the more unique things, but then it also lasts too long with Wiz. Yeah, yeah. With his eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Poor, oh, poor. One joke. Okay, I don't know if they did. They must have did this on purpose, but they actually brought back a season one joke, uh, and that was whenever they were going over Leonardo's 
analysis, they get to Michelangelo, and Boomstick says he really must have been dropped on his head as a as a child. Oh, that was I'm a like, nice back. It was, but it's like, okay, that's kind of the thing that made people not like your analysis of the turtles, especially ben, especially Ben just riffing <laughs> all over Michelangelo, like it's Michelangelo. Like a lot of people at Screw Attack or Death Star, as they are now, don't really like Michelangelo. Like, yeah, but... Every time the... he's mentioned, it's always kind of like, oh, it's this character. Yeah, exactly, so... But, uh, time, but yeah, though, you know, you're kind of ripping on, you know, Carol, so, you know... Yes, because I have... Le- because, there. no, no, there are legitimate reasons for me to take a crap all over Carol, because but she's a terribly written... Ridden... the same about Michelangelo. Well, same. then, no... <laughs> no, shut up. Shut well, up. No. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, this episode was perfect. Everything was was perfect. I have no problems with it. Favorite episode of the season. Really looking forward to how they can kind of blow this one out of the water. But I highly doubt it. But I have faith in Lewis. So, yeah. Good He's episode. He's actually working on the next episode. No, he's not. Uh, okay, no, another sprite animation. I believe for another four episodes. I've heard. Uh, the, Lewis uh, did also confirm on my stream that this would be the ve- this was kind of the last of the sprite fights. Um, like this season. is the last. Yes. Uh, well, no. Of this first half. Right. Uh, I was this gonna is, say like, wow, what are they doing? Yeah. Yeah, no, this is the last string of uh, of sprite fights for this first half. So we have three we had three sprite fights and so the next couple of fights in the first block of season 7 is going to be I would assume more 3D fights, maybe more hand drawn fights. I don't know. I think I'm thinking can... a lot of the sprite teams probably moving on to uh DBX cuz that that's that... Probably returning next month. I yes. Could be wrong. Uh no, it, it's returning pretty soon. Um, but yeah, no. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got nothing else to say other than to kick it over to Billy. Um, what do you what, what do you think? Um, Jaru, uh, you gave your opinion, didn't you? About yes. The yeah, yeah, about about the yeah. Yeah. He said it was a it was a good episode. Nothing to get. Yeah, no, probably eight out of ten. Yeah, there you go. I give it a 10 out of 10 because I'm a biased asshole. <laughs> um, I really like this episode as well. Um, not as much as I did enjoy Sindel versus Black Canary or Miles versus Static, but it's definitely not below them as like in scoring. I've marked them as all the same at the moment. Like Each one's been at 9 out of 10 for me. It's just that each one's had something like it's one thing better than the other that's put it maybe slightly over top like Mars vs. Static had the music and the death, which I think the death was pretty brutal, even though it wasn't blood. Um, it was great seeing Sindel finally death. Even though she lost, I was still happy she got, you know, the respect that she deserves that not a lot of people give to the Mortal Kombat characters these days. Uh, but specifically, you know, a certain community. <laughs> um, and in this episode, I would say the old classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers was like the bit I loved the most. You guys speaking yes. right now? Okay. Um, sorry, it's just I was noticing my audio thing was moving, but there was no. Oh, it's all right. That I couldn't hear you guys talking, so I was like, "Oh crap, the tank go wrong." No, no. Um, the death <laughs> was the highlight for me. Like, freaking like Leonardo tries to throw his ninja star, and you just see it scrape against Jason's helmet. It was like, oh, that is such a badass shot. And then we just see yes. it sliced in half, and then classic Power Rangers fashion, Leo it just explodes for no reason. <laughs> like, they show a bit of blood, and then just, oh, boom! Yeah. <laughs> he went off like a firecracker, like first the firecracker, like first the head exploded, and then the body, and then the legs, and then the feet. <laughs> like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Like, yes. I was like, cut that. I have to give the applause for that. That is such, especially since Power Rangers haven't exactly, Power Ranger fans haven't had, exactly had a good run on the Death Battle channel, DBX or Death Battle wise. Mm, no. That they at least paid, you know, they gave the Power Rangers a victory worthy of them. You know, kill, exactly. the, best, kill the opponent and they strike a pose and then kaboom behind them. Like, I mean, I don't know why Leonardo exploded. I guess the ooze was very explosive upon death. Yeah. 
Um, if I really had to comment on a criticism, um, oof, I would have to really nitpick. Um, well, no, I'm just going to say right now, I don't really have... Aside the, the magic sword thing, I, that's my nitpick. You know, they didn't go into detail about it. They said, oh, it teleports. That's all you need to know. It's like, would have liked to know, you know, the whole story behind the sword, but whatever. <laughs> so aside yeah. that, it was a great episode. Like, especially since this episode, in a way, some people would say it felt like a filler, but a good one. Like, not saying that, oh, we're just going to throw some random fight together until we get the major fight out of the way. Uh, it was actually pretty entertaining, you know, especially for the next time, which I am not too excited about. Oh, <laughs> yes, can we, let's segue into the next time, because I think that, that uh, tickles my nerd bone a little bit, slightly more than this episode did. This episode was a tickle to my nostalgia heart. Okay, well, I'll briefly... If, uh, go ahead. So the next episode is War Machine versus... Okay, correct me if I say this wrong. Genos? Genos? Genos. 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 Right, so I'll get my opinion out of the way so it's not going to be long. I do not give a shit. <laughs> how, how dare you? Okay. So, I mean, I don't blame you, you for not caring about Geno or uh, War Machine. Or Genos. I don't really care for either I character. care. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> well, One Punch Man's one of my favorite series of all time. So... Yes. Well, how do you think I felt when you guys were shitting all over Sindel? Hmm. Um, probably fantastic, because everyone's just <laughs> feeling amazing at all times. Uh, exactly. Okay, so yeah. Okay, when you guys had me on to talk about Tatsumaki versus Mob, I <coughs> re- I've, I've never really watched One Punch Man. I've seen clips on YouTube, montages, <sighs> but I've never really felt the need to really watch an episode. I might change that now because I think season two is going to be added to Netflix soon, and they've just added the they've re-added season one. Yeah. So, so you watch know, I'll, the, uh, I'll fully watch, watch it and you know fully give it my thoughts. I might even post a mini review on. Where are you know, give my yeah. insights. Yeah. Watch uh, the Japanese version. The English version sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, the honest, Japanese. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I do prefer watching English dub because I don't like reading stuff while there's a fight going on. You're dead to us. Yeah. Fair you know, enough. I mean, you know what? The British are dead to everyone, so I don't give a <laughs> the d- Okay, I'll play fair. fair. The, dub, the dub of One Punch Man is actually leagues better than the My Hero Academia dub. That is the lowest bar in existence. Oh, <laughs> roasted. Uh, okay, well, as for War Machine, I'm going to be honest, a lot of people seem to like him in the comics and also the TV shows and the movies. What is so likable about War Machine? He's a dick. I don't think anyone cares. No, uh, it's literally no, just a rock So okay, many ho- love War Machine. He was okay, he is Capcom. not... He's not a dick. He's a more capable, better Iron Man than drunk Tony Stark over there. <laughs> okay, well, okay, let me finish okay. my point. Okay, so, well, Sorry, go Joe, on. that's where you'll kind of be wrong, because so many love War Machine. In fact, there was like a poll years ago, like, who do you like better, War Machine or Iron Man? War Machine won by a landslide. I mean, probably now it'd be changed, because, you know, the whole thing now, that happened with the two Avengers movies. Prob- no, it'd still be War Machine. But, just like, okay, my first introduction for him was in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which, to those who don't know, he was a playable character. And I think he was like an alternative skin for Iron Man, or was he his own character? <laughs> I think he was an uh, alternative skin. Right, so, but he he had his own voice actor, though, so that's why I kind of consider him his own character. And he had yeah. his own unique animations. Capcom did a <laughs> Echo Fights before Nintendo did. So bad. Uh-huh. Um... War Machine, you know, he was fun to play as, and then I watched the old Iron Man cartoon, which he appeared in. Um, he appeared yes. in the Spider-Man cartoon at one point as a cameo. Um, yep. Then the movies, I just never really liked him. He's just like, don't get me wrong, his weaponry looks badass. Well, but yeah, because... at cause... the same time, it just seems like he's just dead to... because Iron Man needed a sidekick. He, he was basically the whole... When Batman got a sidekick, Marvel's like, oh, we need to give every one of our heroes a sidekick. Iron Man, uh, Captain America, uh, this character. I swear, like, I don't understand why anyone would give a shit about fucking War Machine. He is literally on the same, he's a C-tier fucking Marvel character. (laughs) He's on the same level as, actually, he's, at these days, he's even less interesting and cared about than Captain freaking Marvel. 
In fact, no, here's, yeah. the, here's the big Sad. thing that might, like, okay, in um, Civil War 2 in the comics, he was killed off oh, screen, God. and people were not <laughs> only angry that they killed him off, but because they killed him off screen, yet... Yeah. I think Miles got killed off screen, yet no one cared about Miles. It's like, no, forget that. They killed War Machine off screen. It's like, well, where did that's the love for him come from? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, that's because the reason why nobody cared when Miles died is because Civil War Two, and and even before that, Miles' own creator didn't even care about him. Oh, so really? that, that yeah. Yes, of course. Why else would would his own creator just write him as a black Peter Parker? Miles was well, weak was, sauce. Well, he I had kind of nothing. In the previous comics. Well, still. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> and second of all, because War Machine is a better... He, he's a better character. He's a more... He, he's more than just a sidekick. He, okay, he's well, definitely... We're going a bit over the limit. All right. So before... Let's actually talk right. about the fight. But I'll leave okay. this up. Like, to people in the comments, who do you think's better? Iron Man or War Machine? You know? Let's have the debate in the comments and we'll look at it next episode. But as of Fair now, enough. the episode, the next time, what are you guys' thoughts? I'm excited. Jaru? Uh, on the next time? Yes. Oh my god, yes! Um, <laughs> oh my god. Easily distracted. What do you love? Uh, but yeah, uh, regarding the next time, uh, I mean, obviously I love Electric Blood Friend. I think Genos is the bomb, and I think he's way more powerful than people realize. Preach. I'm quite certain he's going to lose. Not because he deserves to lose, per se, but because if Spider-Man gets to be light speed, then I'm sure War Machine gets to be universal. Yeah, that was, so, the, that was the tweet I saw that. <laughs> why yeah. he pulled it. So, I'm not super interested. Like, if it was Genos against someone else, maybe, I would, uh, someone who wasn't a Marvel or DC character. Maybe it might be a little higher, but as it is, it's my interest is at like a four out of ten. So I think I remember. Um, um, I think it was during season two. People were actually suggesting not Wolverine versus Raiden, Raiden versus Genos, Genos. Yeah. Well, and to be yeah. fair, that would have actually been a pretty cool episode. I think those two would have actually it would have been an even match. You know, both are extremely fast and extremely powerful. <laughs> Uh, yeah, bullshit power scaling for more comic characters. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, um, and before anyone gets pissed, if you want to believe Spider Man's light speed, feel free. But yeah, um, don't pretend they're consistent about it. No, but, exactly. Get off your high Spider Man got his ass beat by fucking Silver Samurai and Kingpin. So unless you want to believe those guys are fucking light speed, then. Uh, Would you actually believe me if I told you some people do think that? Well, then they're 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 high and drunk as shit. That yeah, everyone actually say the reason Silver Samurai should have won against Shredder is because he scales the Spider Man who's light speed. But then I'm they like, well, are okay. Though that's fake news. That is fake news. And then I was like, well, at the same time though, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have dodged lasers, so does that make Shredder? Okay. Light speed? All, right, all right. All right. Let's 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 save that. We're we're getting you off right, topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. Is, uh, yes. there's a growing uh, versus community influence in Death Battle, which has resulted in some of these analysis decisions that I'm not particularly fond of. But ultimately, you know, there's no wrong way to analyze a character because they're fictional. They're not real. Well, so any interpretation. That. What's that? <laughs> You're wrong for thinking that because I said so. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Uh, thank you for being the voice of the verse community. Um, right. Exactly. That's what I do. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, it, there's no wrong way to analyze a character. So, if you want to think light and fucking war machines, a galaxy bluster, and Spider Man can dodge all forms of light, and then everyone who's fought him is now also light speed, then freaking feel free. I don't care. Does that mean the typical uh, folks that Spider-Man fights in the PS4 game are light speed as well? Oh, absolutely. It's the only oh logical God. thing. Jesus uh, Christ. Oh yeah, no, it's just a matter of whatever. Believe what you want. It's fiction. No one can prove you wrong. I can tell you right now that Goku is an inch tall, and you could not prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, I'll believe that. 
I'm just worried we're going to get like, like probably uh, three comments saying, well, actually, if you analyze his height compared to the tree. Uh, <laughs> the entire uh, universe yeah. could be the size of a fucking beetle. And you couldn't prove wrong because it's not real. No. You can't analyze something that doesn't exist. Anyway, point is, right. believe what you want. I don't think Janice stands a chance against the all powerful logic of versus community, uh, which seems to be Death Battle's uh, MO these days. So I don't, I don't have high hopes for Janice. Uh, so, but, you know, it might be fun. And. You know, Genos loses a lot anyway, so it's not like it's going to be new. Uh, so, it is what it is. Shut up. Well, actually, that was kind of funny. All right, tag me. Tag me. Somebody tag me. I must drawing. say, tag, me. Texas. tag, you're it. You're okay. it. Okay. Uh, this, this is where I come in. I'm, I'm the complete opposite. I do believe Genos is going to win. I think Genos will indeed uh kick war machine's ass and that hurts me to say because i love war machine uh, Gee, i would have never have gathered that <laughs> whatever um uh, i'm interested in this fight because this is going to be the first batch of non 2d uh sprite episodes in fact um uh, to I hope this gets Jar a little interested. Um, this is going to be our first hand-drawn fight of this first batch. Oh, uh, this fight. Is be hand-drawn? Yes, this will be yeah. hand-drawn. Um, oh, it's, go- it's going to be done by Rooster Teeth themselves. Oh, who nice. did. Yeah, so Rooster Teeth's 2D department is coming back for a second round of doing death battle so wow, that gets as well yes four months since their last one yes exactly um that gets me very excited i'm i'm whole i have high expectations because you're dealing with an anime character anime characters tend to move a lot fucking faster than the human eye can track so i'm really hoping they can handle it I'm hoping for some cool explosions, some cool choreography. I'm just hoping for a good fight that can be just insane. Like, so I have high expectations for that. (laughs) So I'm excited. Um, But I think War Machine is not going to win. And okay, for okay, first of all, no. Uh, War Machine does not fucking scale to Iron Man, whose suit can survive a nuclear bomb or a nuclear blast. No, War Machine's armor is completely different from Iron Man's armor. The best well, way to sum summon... That's not really true, because it, like, like... it was taken from one of his, like, sets of armor that he took. Yes, but, okay, yes, it was taken, but let me put it to you this way. Tony made that suit to essentially just be one thing and one thing only, the big fucking gun. That's all the War Machine armor is. It's literally just an armory of guns, missiles, and what have you. That's it. It does have repulsor, it has a repulsor blast, it can fly, but that's it. That's all of the Stark technology there is. This, This suit is literally a fucking tank with extra missiles and cannons added on top of it. Um, second well, I thing... I kind of have... Sorry, sorry, bro. Does I actually no, have kind of a gripe with, like, the War Machine suit? Not in the modern Iron Man comics and movies, because Iron Man's character sort of changed. In the original comics, Iron Man never killed. He was always non-lethal. Like, the repulsive blast would, like, stun him. Yes. Why would he design a machine that fires bullets... Because um, the in case made after that was still non-lethal. They never used missiles or anything, well, outside like EMP missiles. But he would still always like, no, I use stun. And you know, what, but just for the shits and giggles, I'm gonna make this one filled with rockets, bullets, anti-missiles. <laughs> well, okay. Um, what, what the the reason for thinking? that is well, the, the reason for that is uh, Ro- uh Okay, his best friend <laughs> uh, James Rhodes. He's he's in the military. You know, he's a colonel. He's a very experienced soldier. He's a very good pilot. He's good in hand-to-hand. So it makes sense that you would essentially make a big gun mech oh, so this for a soldier. 
In some iterations, yes, but in other iterations, it was taken from Tony and it was upgraded by yeah, okay. outside uh, by people who weren't Stark employees. So it's kind of fibicky on what the dude was actually. It, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now I do not think. And I do not believe uh, War Machine scales to Spider-Man. He's universe level. Or he's, you know, durable enough to survive a fucking black hole. No. Um, <laughs> I don't War... think the most community says that. <laughs> well, you know they would. <laughs> surprised. <laughs> yeah, You're exactly. Very surprised. Uh, War Machine is essentially just one thing, and that is a big gun. Nothing else and nothing less. Uh, so, but he has had some cool things, you know, he's been able to take a pounding, he's been able to survive some pretty heavy shit. It's nice um, like being hacked by Ultron. Yeah, yeah, um, he's, he's, he, so, he's not just, uh, all glass underneath that suit. He's very tough, and because of that suit being the way it is, he can take a lot more punishment than, say, Iron Man could, because... Iron Man suits are generally less bulky and cumbersome, whereas the War Machine armor, it has to be like that. Because, again, you're essentially just piloting a big tank. And um, in fact, he also has his own Hulkbuster, which he can summon just like Tony can summon his armor. Yes, so and he has there... an extra like, defense against like, really powerful beings. Yes, and um, he does... Before you actually say it, I should mention for viewers, though, that this Hulkbuster has not fought against Worldbreaker Hulk, so don't think that, oh, it scales to Worldbreaker Hulk. No, no, no. This is like pre-future like future Hulk stories and Immortal Hulk. Like, yeah. Like the original Hulk. Like, I'm sure plus, like Warbreaker Hulk would destroy this armor. Yeah, plus everybody has their own fucking Hulkbuster armor. Even Hulk has his own Hulkbuster armor. <laughs> Why would he need the Hulkbuster armor? What, to beat I, up himself? <laughs> no, I don't know. It, it's it's weird. <laughs> anyway. You um, get a Hulkbuster. You get a Hulkbuster. You get a Hulkbuster. <laughs> um, also, too, um, he does have an, another suit, which is called a satellite suit, which... Essentially, this is used for, like, bigger scale invasions or Thanos-type levels of threat or some shit. Um, At least they're but not I don't... waiting for them to come this time. At least they're prepared. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they're going to give him any of those suits. I think they are going to keep it to just uh, Rhodey's, um, Rhodey's base suit. That's it. I mean, he has upgraded it. There's been different marks of the War Machine armor, but it's been consistent. It's just a big fucking gun. Um, and the I fastest... I think they should at least give him his... At least his Hulkbuster, because Iron Man was able to use all his most powerful suits. I think they got to do the same but, for Rhodey. Well, the, the reason they did it for Iron Man is because he's fucking Iron Man. Of course he gets multiple suits. Rhodey generally doesn't need multiple suits he's he's proven he can deal with just with threats using his base war machine armor and you gotta give uh, credit considering the fact that that armor is less advanced than the future iron man ones that's saying a yes lot. yes exactly you, you hit the nail on the head um the fastest that suit can go is lightning speeds because it was able to keep up with an enemy that was absorbed in electricity. Like, we're not talking electro shit. No, we're talking about somebody who was literally in the shape of a lightning bolt, and he was going lightning speeds, and Rhodey was able to keep up with him and all of that. So that's the fastest I think the suit can go. I don't think it can go light speed or, you know, uh, FTL. Huh? Never know. They might have found something that might be like, oh shit, this is when he did fly a light speed, and not because we scaled him to Spider Man. <laughs> oh god. Um, but as for Genos, I think Genos has got this because Geno may Genos may be lacking in more variety, but he's got quality weapons that have taken down buildings that have roasted enemies to a burnt crisp. He has been able to literally keep up with Saitama via upgrades to his cybernetic body. Like, 
Uh, uh, he's gone Genos... upgrade season two, though, hasn't he, Jaru? Yeah, yes. Oh, he yes, gets he an has. upgrade literally, like, every Always. fight. And yes. You've been kind of keeping quiet, Jaru. I was getting worried. <laughs> I thought I'd at least saying? find some way to break it. Wow, I can't believe what machine could do all that stuff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say about it. No, it's all right. Uh, Fair enough. Um, also, too, Genos, I would argue Genos can keep up with War Machine. Just because War Machine can fly, that doesn't really mean anything because Genos has been able to take Disguise, and he's actually faster than the human eye can track because he was able to uh, outpace one of Saitama's recurring villains, uh, Speed of Sound Sonic whose literal uh, gimmick is speed, moving faster than the human eye can track. And he was able to out-blitz him for... Punch Man uh, characters were faster than that. Well, none of them... Well, no, you'd be surprised. None of them go faster than light. They mostly do go faster than the human eye can track. Does Saitama get stuck in a black hole? This is... Um, but I'm going over, like... Yeah. like yes, yes, he did. But... Confirmation, so I haven't actually watched yeah. the episodes. Yes, he did get stuck to an actual black hole. Yeah, exactly. It's right. it's not a real black hole, but it's the equivalent of one. I mean, so, if it's exactly it's, like it's, one, then... Well, okay, it's it's not exactly... It's very complicated to explain. Uh, Jar can explain it better than I can. Um, there are I'll plenty watch of it later characters. today. Many of the characters are faster, massively faster than sound. Uh, there are a handful of characters who are faster than light. Uh, yes. Not many, but uh, I don't know if Genos is one of them yet. Uh, yeah. I haven't caught up on the webcomic, so I'm not sure. But he's certainly yeah. he's going to get there before long, because he's constantly <laughs> becoming more powerful. You yes, it's like, they do this episode, and they say the only reason Genos didn't win was because he wasn't light speed, and then a new comic comes out, like, oh look, Genos is moving beyond oh, light speed. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> he's a shonen character. He's gonna become yeah. much more powerful in a year than he is now. Yes, so. yes, exactly. Um, that's, that's, why I'm I'm that's why I don't care about this match. It's like, oh, he could, he could lose, and it would not change anything. Yeah, no, well, okay, again, uh, Genos has a lot, Genos's arsenal is way more deadlier than fucking War Machines. War Machines is, you know, just guns and missiles, and that shit runs on limited ammo. Genos doesn't seem to run out of energy when he uses his attacks. And like I said, his strongest attack before he um, learned what, uh, what made Saitama so strong, his strongest attack at the time in Season 1 could destroy literally a whole fucking building and bring it down, and pe and it made it. More than and that. yeah, and when the Hero Association looked into it, they thought that a blast or something equivalent to a fucking bomb destroyed that building. Because he didn't just destroy the building; he destroyed a sizable chunk of the mountain behind it. That too, yes. That is so. Who knows? Maybe Genos will finally break his own losing streak. Well, again, Gen Genos the anime wins plenty of fights. It's just that he doesn't win the ones on screen. Yes, oh, exactly. Like, okay, yeah. in Is he season the two, of One Punch Man. No, he's not no, the Yamcha. Yamcha, fucking, he's the Goku of One Punch Man. <laughs> exactly. There you wow. go. Uh, yes, I would like Genos has won plenty of fights. Um, yes, he didn't win a lot of fights in season one, but during the manga, the web comics in season two, he does win more fights. Let me, he just can't to ever beat his master. Like, in, like, he tried to be his master, he tried to get to his level, and then he realized he could never get to Saitama's level. So Saitama pretty much told him, look, don't try and be stronger than me, try and be the strongest you can be. Which is why he constantly... Yeah, that's, actually a, that's, that's actually quite a good message from a parody. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Because that was Genos' whole goal in, his, in, in, his, in the first season of One Punch Man. He wanted to have Saitama's power, but then he realized it's something he could never obtain. And so he just kept upgrading his, uh, his body to essentially just deal with monster level threats uh and that's the one thing i think he's got over war machine is genos has fought in more 
has a monster. Yes, thank you. He has fought. I mean to be a grammar Nazi. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, it's okay. Genos has fought more end of the world shit than War Machine because um, War Machine is unfortunately just a sidekick. He's not. He has been Iron Man a couple of times, but he's never. He's never been in those type of end of the world situations. He's never. In America, I remember hearing that somewhere. No, no, the Iron Patriot. It's a whole other thing. Right. Okay. Um, Yes, so I think Genesis is going to win, plain and simple. Um, I think people are grossly underestimating what he can do. Sure, he's not Saitama, but that doesn't mean he's anything less. I fair, do think... be like the third episode you call in a row, like you've got in the other episodes, right? Fourth fourth episode, actually. I, I never spoke to you about the Stag versus Mile one, so I wouldn't know that. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, no. Ge- Genos, what Genos is, it's, it's essentially quality versus quantity. That's what we're dealing with here. You know, War Machine has a tank like armor with all of these bells and whistles, but it's not nearly as advanced as Iron Man's, whereas Genos has constantly made upgrades to his base uh, functions and weapons, and they've been able to do catastrophic damage like okay. we're literally talking he's he can do he can arguably do more damage uh than one punch man if he was at his fullest most upgradedness Upgrade. i just made that up it's a great <laughs> um okay since we're coming up to the owl mark so is that what you want yes. to close up on uh, richard of your yes no, no i'm Yes, uh, no, that that's that closes my thoughts. I hope it's a great episode. I have faith in Genos. It pains me that I have to go against War Machine, but I do think um, Genos will finally get his win, and this is a matchup he can win because the other matchups people requested him for, he he stood no fucking chance, absolutely no I chance. I feel like he would. I feel like he could win against Raiden. Maybe, but. Sure. Maybe. But, uh, unless they scale him to Metal Gear Solid, who's dodged a light oh. and is clearly light Oh speed. my god. <laughs> All well, right. Well, Snake can destroy the universe. He did it once, I believe. Uh, believe him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Death. Joru, have you given your final thoughts? Yes. yes. I hope the fight's cool. If Janus wins, there is a god. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go to church the next day, like, listen, I made a promise to God, Mom. I'll be back. So <laughs> long. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't care for these two characters. I mean, I'm going to go watch One Punch Man Season 1 on Netflix uh, tonight, so maybe after that I'll be like, yeah, go Genos! <laughs> uh, that's what I'm hoping. So, yes. to wrap up this episode, people, we are going to discuss what could be a controversial topic. We kind of have to kind of chat and shit about it for most of this. We, what are your thoughts on the versus community? Is it a very welcoming committee, or is okay. it does it have its problems that could turn newcomers away? So, All right. uh, uh, do you want me to give my thoughts on it first, or do you guys want to go first? Uh, I'll tag I'll tag Jarun. I'll tag Jarun because Jarun? I'm mostly going to say what he's going to say, so I'll tag him in. All right, I have a lot to say, so. Do you want uh, me to go first then? Because I'm not going to talk about it as much. I'm just going to give. Okay, so when I was a kid, I didn't really take verse. I mean, even now, I don't take verse debate seriously. Like, me and my mum's boyfriend, we had this funny joke who would win between Jesus and Superman? And we still, to this day, <laughs> we still just have a little fun, little sparring mode, like, who would win between these two? Um, but of course, we're not going to go into depth like who would win, and we're not going to scale them to anything. Both would both would be friends with each other. Oh, absolutely. that's how that would go. Cool dudes. Yeah, um, of course. Or even like Goku versus Superman. Sure, as a kid, I loved Goku. Like, who didn't like Dragon Ball growing up? Um, a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, though, when there was that debate, I think it, I probably did hear about Death Battle, but I never really cared because I was on the social media much. Um, people in my school were going on about Goku vs. Superman. I'm just like, I don't really care who would win. I, I, I like both. <laughs> I like to think they would team up and take on Doomsday together. 
That would be fucking Goku joins the Z Fighters or the Z Fighters join the Justice League. That would be fucking lit. Dude, Goku would kill it. Like, as a Justice would, League member. He would be... The Z Fighters would all be awesome in that. But then when I look at... When I finally did start going on social media, I'm like, oh, these people are talking about Goku versus Superman. Man, did it turn me away. Like, holy shit. I've never Preach. seen a more unwelcoming community in my life. Mm-hmm. You're either with this character or you're against a whole like, army of nerds. I think the first, it wasn't just Goku versus Superman, it was Tifa versus Yang. Like, okay, now I'm not going to give my thoughts about the death battle fight itself, but after that episode, I think it was like a few months after that episode, I was seeing fan art of Tifa torturing Yang and Ruby for some reason. I'm, just I'm like, not editing that. I'm not editing that in. Oh, fuck you. Why are people painting Tifa as this sadistic murderer? <laughs> <laughs> or even Raiden versus Four. There was pictures of Raiden just tearing Four apart. It's like, well, that actually doesn't sound out of character at all. Okay, well, in a story <laughs> context. <laughs> but it was more like, like, you are a pathetic waste of life. I think that's what the speech bubble said. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's almost like they're kind of spiteful of that shit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and not only that, now this isn't about the fights. I'm talking about now the people. I've seen people yeah. talk behind people's backs. Like, oh, did you see this dickhead saying, oh, he thinks SpongeBob would win against Aquaman? I'm just like, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just, no, okay, no. okay. I'm not going to say which oh, server sure. this was on, but I'm exactly. on my like Discord server, and holy shit, this poor kid, you know, he was upset that goat that. You know, Sonic lost to Mario in Mario vs. Sonic rematch. You know, and he wasn't being rude or anything about it. You know, he was just generally upset. But those community were just going after him and then talking behind his back. Like, oh, he should kill himself because he fought that. Oh, he doesn't do research, so his opinion doesn't matter. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> what the fuck is this community about? <laughs> I came into this thinking, oh, fun verse debate, yay. I came out of it like, <laughs> not so fun first of all. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm yes. Gonna, and also, my last four here before I let you speak, Joe. Yeah. The commentary community, but slash verse community. When they talk about Death Battle or even other verse shows like Cartoon Fight Club, um, Crossover X, if some people disagree with an episode, they'll give their criticisms what they can improve on. Not some of the commentary communities in the Death Battle, in the verse community. They would rather give destructive criticism, for if people don't know, it's when you're giving criticism but you not really provide in any way they can improve, you just want to put them down and say how terrible they are. You're not offering any improvements or anything like that. That's what I see in a lot of the Versus community. Like, if a YouTube channel that just started, like, oh, I'm going to do my own Versus show and, you know, maybe uh, do something different that Death Battle does, but you do one mistake, the Versus community will tear you apart. Like, if you said something like, oh, uh, Spider-Man is light speed, <laughs> and somehow a diverse community disagree with you, then, yeah, you're pretty much the clown of the diverse community at that point. They would agree with you. I'm, I'm giving a hypothetical scenario. Like, if you say this character's light speed because you made one mistake, or you compared it to something that wasn't true, rather yeah. than just saying, all right, you made a mistake, but here's how you could do it next time. No, they'll just be like, no, you shouldn't be in the verse community, oh, go, go kill yourself and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. The yes. These, the moment these guys make the bullies at my high school look good, you have a problem. Yeah. I, I go into nerd culture wanting to feel welcomed, I'm with fellow nerds. No, I feel more <laughs> welcomed getting like a fork jammed up my ass against the bullies at my high school. I feel more <laughs> welcomed there. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Look, like... It, look, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say it all in a couple words or less. The versus community, uh, it sucks. Like the debaters suck. Everybody are assholes to each other. They can't w- take criticism. They can't take opinions. They it's either it's either you're with us or you're fucking against us. And to that I say, well then, uh, I have no intentions of interacting with you. Because all of you need to get a fucking life. Like a- and it's a, fa- it's a fucking fact. Um, and I don't care. Like, I have a reputation in the versus community. People take my word uh, seriously. Pe- people have gone after me for doing the littlest of mistakes or going against characters that I shouldn't be re- 
uh, that I shouldn't be going against. And uh, I don't care because it's my fucking opinion. You can't change what I say. So either get on board with what I have to say or just get the hell out of my channel altogether. I've even seen Animation Rewind get like really like negative force just because, oh, he said Goku would beat Superman. I'm just like... Yes, so and fucking what? <laughs> yeah, yes, and, and again in your face. He's saying, "Oh, you can agree that Superman beats Goku. That's fine." Like there was never yes. any point in his videos. He would be like, "No, oh, well, you're wrong because no, 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 that." So, like, yes, and and if somebody nice why does the verse community really disrespect him? Because the verses community are assholes, and I, I, as somebody who's friends with AR, who works for AR. I got to tell you this, if all of you think AR has a personal mission to spite you and redo death battles, then you don't know anything. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> all of you he's just done that death battle's already done. It's like, okay, he can give his own opinion on it. Death battle don't own the debate. <laughs> no, they don't. So again, it's, it's, again, I'm just going to finish up by saying the versus community, it's an awful, awful place. I, at this point, I think people shouldn't get into the versus community. They shouldn't debate with these people because it's just going to lead to nothing but chaos and it's going to make you lose interest in these shows and topics you once loved as a kid. Like, I am completely turned away from the Dragon Ball community, the Naruto community, the One Piece community, the, all of the anime community it, uh, because they have a tendency to make you not like talking about this shit I, with them. I love Naruto. I love it more than Dragon Ball. But when Roshi defeated Jiraiya, or when Sasuke lost to... Him, how, how do you pronounce his name? Hayai? Hayai. Yeah, yeah, I did not care. I mean, sure, I was bummed out because I love those characters, but at the same time, it's Death Battle's opinion. I'm not... And if some people in the first community hate Death Battle just because, oh, they had this Naruto character lose, I'm like, well... My mum thinks Naruto would lose to a My Little Pony, so is, is she a bad verse debate or is she just having fun? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jaru, uh, sorry. we Tag again. <laughs> I didn't expect my hot take to be the most kind uh, of the group, but uh, oh, wow. I guess that's where we're, yeah, I guess, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I thought about this a lot, and uh, what I concluded is that in the versus community, there are broadly three types of people. On the far left, we have the casuals. These are the people who aren't really that interested in rules debate. They're more interested in it and interested in death battle from a crossover standpoint. They're, they think it'll be fun. They think it'll be cool to just see these characters from different series interacting. And so they just hope it's a fun time. They just want it to be a cool fight. They don't really care too much about who wins. They're just here for the fun of it all. They definitely have the most healthy mindset about it. Uh, a good example of this. <laughs> a good example of this would be someone like uh, Riz Grestar. Like he's a reaction. He or used to do reactions to death battle, and that was always his take. Was that he didn't really care that much about who won. He was just more in it for the fun of it all. And that's the healthiest state like place to yes. get because they know that's fiction there's no right or wrong way for a versus matchup to go it's just Absolutely. like anyone can it, who wins a fight between goku versus superman has nothing to do with feats or logic or science it has to do with who's writing the episode so then that's what the casuals understand is that it's just a th story it's just for fun there's no real answer to a versus um, Even like first community people go after like fanfic writers if they have something like Sam yes. beating Beerus from Undertale. Yes, <laughs> yes, probably. But uh, here's the thing: it's all fanfiction. All versus yes. is fanfiction. It's yeah, no more legitimate or true or accurate than any other fanfiction. Um, anyway, so that's the first group: the casuals. They're the healthiest. They're the nicest. Uh, they're generally the ones, well, the only ones you really want to interact. With. Oh, thank you. The second yes. group are what I'd call the uber fans. These are the people who aren't interested in versus debate in general, but rather they get really into they're really into one series or one character. And so whenever that character shows up in like a death battle, 
they come out of the woodwork to, you know, really talk about the matchup, not because they necessarily care about versus debate or the death battle, but because they want to, you know, they want to stand up for their boy, you know, or whatever. Like name one YouTuber who would like that during Green Lantern versus Ben 10, but... Yes, uh, that guy. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, speaking of him, uh, I forget his exact name. He's like Kuba the Artist. Or, yes, yes, I'm trying to yes. not say it, man. I don't want his fanboys coming after me. Well, you don't have to worry about it because I have nothing but positives to say about him. Oh, Same. Uh, he is an example of an Uber fan who did it right. He is a rare gam- example of a respectful person just disagreeing with Death Battle and you know, presenting his reasons why, because he's a big fan of Ben 10. And you can tell whenever watching his videos that whenever, except for things related to things that got wrong with Ben 10, he doesn't really disagree with them or argue with them, and he doesn't hate on the video in general. He praises in many episodes, many aspects of it. And oh, okay. he's a, a very rare example of a respectful, like, how to do it right, Uber fan. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually worried I was going to say that. Well, I thought his video was kind of good on that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since you're saying nice things about him, yeah, he's one of the rare people who's like, oh, I don't agree with them, but eh, you know what? It's their opinion. Yeah. Uh, now, so you find the, that with um, Seth, the programmer, who's quite a controversial person in the first community, but even though Seth kind of gave him destructive criticism on Ben 10 versus Goku, he responded very respectfully, which I gotta give him props for that. Yeah. Um, well, sadly, most Uber fans are not as respectful as uh, the Mr. Ben 10 fan, uh, Ink Tank. Uh, most of them are pure vile. Like, they are angry, they're hateful, and they're here to let you know that death battle is evil and wrong. And if you agree with them, so are you. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the, the worst example of this and the most obvious example of this would have to be the various Dragon Ball Z the channels and various just general anime channels that came out in uh, hate of, dra- of the first Goku versus Superman. Uh, these people, they're the, are some of the most vile people you'll encounter in the versus community. Because... They aren't interested in what the general versus debaters have to say. They're not interested in what the casuals have to say. They're not interested in what Death Battle has to say. They're here to tell everyone how wrong and awful they are and why they're right. And that's it. That's all they're there for. Uh, like, these Uber fans are responsible for ruining Dragon Ball for me for a number of years. I went from being a fan to a hater for, like, five years. Because, yes. And it took a while for me to recover because I was just so disgusted. With their awful behavior. Uh, wow. Uh, and you said we're going to be a slightly bit more positive. <laughs> well, that is a. Sl- well, I consider that a bit more positive. I've already. I said. said that there was more. Con- I said there's some good Uber fans. I said casuals were pretty nice. Okay. That's more right. than the opposite. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, no. Uh, most Uber fans are generally very opinionated, they're very biased, and they're also very aggressive. Uh, not all of them. I think the Ink Tank guy, he is a great example of a good, of an Uber fan who does it right, who's respectful. Um, interestingly, it's worth noting that the reason Ben Tenris Green Lantern has the highest dislike ratio of all time on Death Battle is because, not because he convinced the Death Battle viewers that Death Battle was wrong, but because he brought an entire new fan base to Death Battle to dislike the video. That uh, is kind of uh, yeah. intentional. He did not. No, yeah, I, w- I was going to say he unintentionally brought a new style of fans to dislike of that video. Yes. Of course, you're not really going to like the death battle anymore because it's kind of like, oh, shit, I didn't mean to give this guy this much flack. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's why I tend to not be... Uh, it's why I tend to kind of hold back my real problems with the fight. If you go back, you look at my, my reviews for Season 6, there were problems that I had with it, but I tried to not let it be the main vocal point because that can inspire people to see exactly what you're talking about almost as if like you're jesus christ and you're opening their eyes uh to this one thing you never saw and then they immediately go and look at this thing with uh, new eyes and a new perspective okay um what was the third sort type of verse uh, debate as gyro Oh, yes. Um, so if there's the casuals are the nice ones, they're the most, you know, reasonable, the most friendly. Uh, Uber fans, kind of a coin flip. 
but generally kind of toxic. Then there is the final category. These are the people that you can just straight up call the versus debaters. Oh, these people, fans. <laughs> these are the people who aren't in it for a particular series, like the Uber fans. Then, then, and they take it. They're not casuals, so they don't. They don't. Uh, they care a lot about the outcome because they're not in it for characters or series or anything like that. They're in it for versus debate. That's what they care about. They don't care about Goku. They don't care about Superman. They care about Goku versus Superman. Uh, and these people, let's see how to phrase this. Uh, they have developed their own unique system of logic and research and analysis that they use for the uh, handling of death battles and frictional characters in general. And so they have a very specific idea of what characters are like, what they can do, and that is the worldview that they go with. And to be perfectly clear, there is no wrong interpretation of fiction. It's not real. You can believe whatever you want about it. And there's no way to prove anyone right or wrong. Because you can't prove anything about something that doesn't exist. I'm just waiting tomorrow we're going to, if this video gets uploaded tomorrow, that we're going to have like a big thumbnail of a text <laughs> over it saying, uh, lads discuss death battle debunked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, would all be capital letters. <laughs> uh, that would be. But no. Um, so yeah, so let me be clear. The versus debater approach is not wrong. It's just not any more right than anyone else's approach. Because if, like, I don't know, let's say the, the writers for Spider-Man and the writers for Batman got together and they said Batman would win, would you count that? Uh, and they all said Batman would win, not just the Batman writers, the Spider-Man ones too. Would you say that would be the only time to really count a verse debate settled? No. Uh, well, it's just, it varies from person to person. Some people would say crossovers don't count. Some people would say that that settles the debate. It's an entirely a matter of opinion. Because yes. there is no correct answer. Uh, and, yes. well, so I just want to be clear. If you think Spider-Man is light speed, if you think everyone in Marvel is light speed, if you think, you know, half of them can blow up a planet, or whatever, that's fine. You're not wrong. You're not necessarily right. You're just giving your opinion. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having opinions. There are no right or wrong opinions about fiction. Yes. Um, yes, However, absolutely. Go ahead. However, there, it, what makes the versus debaters have such a bad reputation Yes. is that they don't just think their way is a way to look at fiction and verse debates. They think it's their way is the, the only Yes. Any yeah. other way is inferior. Any other way requires you to, if you think it's the better way, you are obviously less intelligent. Uh, and they are not fun, they're not shy of telling you just how wrong you are, and just how incorrect you are, and just how arrogant and stupid you are for daring to think something other than what they think. Uh, some of them are decent enough to only trash talk you uh, in private with their friends and like Discord servers and such. Oh my god, that, that really <laughs> pisses me off. Like, <laughs> yes. This is actually generally me, me angry at that. Like, if you're so much of a pussy that you can't even text someone your opinions and you go behind their back on a Discord, get a fucking life, mate, because. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're too scared just to say, oh, Jaru, I don't agree that you think Ganon beats Dracula then you have no balls or tits or whatever you are. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I just had to get out. <laughs> I was getting a bit yeah. angry there. <laughs> I understand. Um, so, yeah. So, they are very dedicated to their system of thought, and they are unwilling to change. They have their way of doing things. They think it's the best way, and they will broach no arguments, in, especially against their methodology. Uh, you can argue with them, and they won't get triggered, provided that you use their own system and their own logic in a way that appeals to them. You but otherwise, that, just block you for it, though. 
That's a fair. I guess well, that could I think, happen too. Well, uh, but right. it's definitely your your best shot with a versus debater for having a friendly conversation is to just not talk about the versus debate because many of the versus debaters that I've met are pretty decent people when yes. they're not talking about versus debate. Uh, but when they're talking about versus debate, things get rough. They yeah. Are it's almost like all their social awareness goes out the window because. <laughs> They will start fighting and arguing and insulting to the point that I've seen people ruin friendships because mm-hmm. they couldn't tell that their arrogant versus debate opinions were offending people and insulting people. And that the way, that, or not just the opinions were insulting them, but the way they were insulting other people for having different versus debate opinions was upsetting them. And so the fact that they could ruin friendships over versus debate is astounding. I, I have actually seen that firsthand, and let me tell you, it, it was not fun. But yeah, no, I... It's sad. I, I've went through it, it recently. It was just so heartbreaking. I won't say the uh, people who were involved. Yeah, no names. My goodness, my friend really needed a shoulder to cry on that day, just to the fact that a friendship was ended because of Deadpool versus Pinkie Pie. I am not making that shit up. Yeah, Deadpool no. Deadpool versus um, Pinkie Pie ruined a friendship. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, well, it's it, then it's Ow. the opposite. Then it could be the opposite. You know, you have somebody who is afraid to even talk to you or uh, collaborate with you. It can ruin collab- future collaborations, too. Uh, generally fun people you love to collaborate with. I'm not... Back to we'll the topic. That yeah. yeah, no, um, I've seen it ruin collaborations, you know, and it can, and it sucks because if people, that's how serious these people take it, you know. Um, so I agree. I, I agree with Jaru. I've been on the wrong side of it many, many times myself, and that's generally why I don't consider myself a versus debater. I never will, and I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody should consider themselves a versus debater. You know, you should a be allowed. Professional versus debater, I should say. Unless you're earning money Look. from versus debating, you're not professional. Yeah, exactly. Um, but in, in, in any regards, in any regards, um, you shouldn't. Because uh, at the end of the day, you're just here to have a good time. You know, you're happy to see your char- your your fictional character get some representation get more people to go and check out the media that they came from and add more fans to it but also you're here to see a good story and that's what uh that, that that's what the casuals that's what i like about that's what like Joe said i love the casuals um i love some of the uber fans if not maybe five of them <laughs> that are out there there are bad people. Uh, there are bad Uber fans. There are good Uber fans. Um, but to me, I have to admit, um, I was kind of a bit of a uh, a bit of an Uber versus me debate, I guess, because um, Leopold the Brave he did a debate between Ryu versus Knuckles, and boy, I was like a salty little bitch about that. <laughs> so Leopold the Brave, if you do watch this, I've matured now. I respect your opinion about that match. <laughs> Oh, of course. I know. You don't got to prove anything, man. You're now, cool. That's the thing. It's like, Leopold the Brave is also one of those verse debaters. I'd say he's kind of sort of like the, what's his name? Ink uh, artist? Ink, ink the Tank. Yeah, I'd say Leopold the Brave is kind of on that sort of level, but not too bad. Like, Traitor versus Scout, he did his own one before Death Bout, ironically, did it next month. He said Scout would win. They said, you know, Tracer would win. And uh, like, he never went after him. He gave his thoughts on the episode. He even did the same with Ryu versus Jin. But man, there, was, there wasn't a lot of people getting angry at him, but there was like a majority of people saying, well, no, because you didn't do death battles method. It's like, well, he does his own yes. method. <laughs> look, look, in my opinion, and I'm, and I'm going to preach this to everybody who listens to us, 
the word of God themselves do not end or end any of these debates. You know, not at all. no, and they shouldn't because that goes against what the creators of these characters fully intended. They didn't intend for them to, you know, cause a debate like this. They didn't cause uh, this to break friendships, break partnerships, collaborations, and just overall turn a community into a toxic lava pool. Do you know what the version they did kind of remind me of? That village from Ooh. Resident Evil 2, uh, Resident Evil 4. <laughs> you know this uh, well, like, you don't respect the verse community you must die <laughs> well to me they're ju- the versus community they're just a bunch of trolls and like you said they and, and like and i do like, have a little you know, bit of sense. oh no sorry i apologize all right we do well, need to get to wrapping up as well <laughs> yeah anyway as i was saying um i think that was yeah no worries uh so yeah, I've uh, I was definitely I've had, I've had my uh, scuffles with the versus community over the years, um, and I uh, don't regret any of it. Um, and there were times where I was less polite than I should have been, as they love to remind me. Um, but ultimately, everything I've done is child's play compared to the sheer toxicity of the people who get angry with me. So. I never really feel bad about what I've said. I um, sometimes do. Or, a bit of a, I'm a bit I of sometimes, let me rephrase. I feel bad when I actually hurt people. I don't intend to. Yes. But most of the people who I argue with from the versus debate community, uh, or the vers- among the versus debaters, are not people who are hurt by my opinions. They're just angry, toxic people who want to belittle people. And that, those people I don't have any regrets about arguing with and even saying some less than polite things because it wasn't i mean they had it coming i'm sorry but no, uh, no. they had it coming people <laughs> when i say that oh i was rude or whatever it's like it's fucking i i'm it's mildly impolite like at worst <laughs> you would look at it as like you just fudge someone where they'll go a full right hook in the face Oh, they'll pull out a shotgun and blow your balls off. Like, they have no word. Balls. Yeah, they're, 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 they don't hold back. Uh, but ultimately, I think the biggest issue with the versus debaters, and the thing that makes them most reviled, is that they think really highly of themselves. Uh, they think their way is the best way. They are unwilling to budge on it. And this demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding amongst them about the nature of fiction which is that it's not real. There is no proof about what a character can do because proof is something that only happens in reality. You cannot yes. switch to a comic book and say this is proof because it's no. not. It's fiction. You it's never not. the next day the writers could say, oh, that's not canon anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> hell, versus debaters are so confident in their own stance that they will literally ignore things the writer says you know, the person who created the series. Because it doesn't fit their particular system of love. Yeah, they count it as bias. Yeah. They think that somehow their perfect analysis is more important than the god of the universe. Like, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So they're, they think very highly of themselves. They think their way is the best way. They will broach no discussion that dis- like opposes their methodology. And it shows that they don't realize that with fiction, there is no right way to approach it. There is no correct way to handle versus debate. I could say He-Man would beat the shit out of every Dragon Ball character simultaneously. And you can't prove me wrong, because it doesn't exist. There's no yes. real He-Man or Goku or anyone else. And you can't go and fetch them and test my hypothesis. It literally, all versus debate analysis is what would be called a hypothesis. Because hypothesis means a theory that doesn't have evidence because there can't be evidence because it's not real casuals understand this well, I'm just gonna say this outright. if some people believe ruby rose can beat sonic and the flash i just say let them i mean it's not hurting anybody exactly <laughs> yeah i know them wrong either way so yeah i know let them enjoy their headcanon because it's just as yeah. legitimate as yours and yeah, you can't debaters don't get it. you can't change these people 
Some people yeah. want to say Lobo beats Ghost Rider. I'm, I'm definitely joining that side. <laughs> but I sure. just want them to be respectful yeah, the, about it. No. Yeah, because it's silly to be hateful and toxic and insulting about a fan fiction. Yes. Because that's what this all is, all is, is fan fiction. Oh, yes. Wait, guys, hold on. Bit out as, as well, man. I feel so bad for Sean. <laughs> no, no, it's it's okay. It's I'll all wrap, right. I'll wrap up real quick. Yeah, wrap yeah. Up. Um, Tag it back then. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, yeah, they don't understand that it's fiction. There is no facts. There is no proof. Uh, pointing to a comic book and saying it's proof is showing a deep misunderstanding of the fact that there's no proof in a world where nothing is real, and they don't get that. They just don't understand that, and that boggles the mind you think they thought it was real or something and it's not it's there's no proof there's no correct way to handle versus debate there's no correct way to think about fictional characters no part particular fan fiction is any more true or real than anyone else's fan fiction and it's their insistence that they are right in a subject in which there can be no right that makes them so reviled because not only are they arrogant and confident about their own superiority they're arrogant in a way that is objectively wrong. And that is what makes them so hard to deal with. And, you know, of course, there's going to be a lashback against me saying all this stuff because uh, they obviously know that. They already hate me, though, so I don't really care too much. Yeah, uh, well, that kidding. and, sorry, uh, real quick, that and if they do uh, give you backlash, they're just proving their point for you. Exactly. It's like, oh, wow, they got angry and toxic about the fact that I think they're angry and toxic because they act that way all the time. Shocker. They just dislike yeah. the video and just not comment at all. Yeah, well, that, again, then they're just proving the point. Exactly. Like, as long so, if you're one of those people that says you argue but don't argue, well, then there's nothing I can do as I don't know your address. So you got lucky, punk. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, they have... They have some issues, and uh, I think I, what really ultimately caused me to stop interacting with these people and stop arguing about most of the debate was when it actually started to cost me friendships, and oh, that was when I realized sorry. that I can't talk with these people because they are yes. actually dangerous. They yes. actually endanger people's happiness, and I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to let them endanger my happiness or my friend's happiness or anyone else's, and yes. I, I hope they – because ultimately all this is a maturity thing. Anyone who thinks too much about versus debate and is too obsessed with it and literally lets it ruin their friendships is just immature. And I, yes. hope, I hope they grow up. Uh, I sincerely do. I don't As hate do I. People. I don't hate these people at all. I have no negative feelings for this. No, you don't I know just, them personally. I'm, yeah, I'm just sad that they are the way they are. And I hope they get better. Yes. That's all my thoughts yeah. on versus community. Word. I'm uh, kind of glad we touched on this. Yeah, no, me too. Um, yeah, I'll just end it by saying, I'll, I'll, I'll just end my piece by saying everybody needs to grow up. You know, we're all, on, we're, you're either on the path to maturity or you are uh, a grown ass person. You need to grow up. You, you just, you have to be a responsible adult. You can't be an irresponsible child when it comes to versus debating. And uh, I'll close my bit off saying, listen, the writers of these characters clearly managed to put something they enjoy doing into one of their jobs. And in Death Battle is, or any other Versus show, done exactly that. They thought, let's see if we can turn this fun hobby into something that could earn us money, but also be fun at the same time. If you're good, don't try and ruin it for them, you know. Offer help, maybe give slight criticism. Don't be destructive and critic, critic at the same time. It's not fun, no one's going to want to talk to you then. And then it's just going to create a whole toxicity scenario. So I think that's pr we pretty much gave our thoughts on everything, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Right then, so let's wrap this up because I want my pizza. I am hungry. <laughs> I'm a hungry boy. And I've been the irony! I've been sat in the same position for hours and I think I'm going to have to crack my knees back in place. <laughs> oh, goodness. You're having pizza? In memory of Leonardo's pizza. I just take a bite out of pizza. This one's for you. Wrong. <laughs>
<laughs> just like, just like the you. Yeah. Um, My mom's just gonna look at me from the other end of the table, like, still okay. So, let's all give our outros. Let's try and do this professionally this time. Okay. So, um, so to uh, everyone who's watching, thank you all so much for tuning in for another episode of Death Battle. Uh, la lads discuss Death Battle. Now, what if you're going to be civil about it? What are your thoughts on the versus community? Are you a part of it? Were you a part of it? Or are you just getting into it? Let us know what you think of it, and we may talk about it next episode. Guys. Yes. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'm glad. I'm glad to be doing this again with these two guys. Go support them. They're awesome people, and there's nobody. There's no two people I would rather have by my side to talk about uh, the greatness of death battle and the wonders of friendship. So yes, this is this <laughs> is Saber King. Own, my little pony sort of intro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my little death battle. <laughs> um, anyway, um, this is Saber King saying, "May my reign last for an eternity." <laughs> Like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you got something to say, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, have a fantastic day. Leonardo, this pizza I'm about to eat is in memory of you. <laughs> <laughs>